This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning and welcome to worship at Worthington United Methodist Church. It's good to be worshiping with you, whether you're here in person or joining us online. Let us rise and pass the peace to one another. Give each other a sign of peace and say hi to your neighbors. Let's make our way back to our seats for the call to worship. Let's rise in body or in spirit for the call to worship. Um, and just because I'm not trying to trip you up, notice that we say the first line all together, which is uh, backwards from what it usually is. So let's join together in the call to worship. God, you are our refuge. You are the shore in sight, the hands that reach out, the ground on which we rest. God, you are our strength. You are the life we long for, the refusal to give up, the keys of home we carry with us. God, you are our help in times of trouble. We call on you from the ruins and the rubble. We call on you from the wildness and the deep. We call on you to meet us in this place. Let us join together in our opening hymn, Blessed Jesus at Thy Word. Please be seated. Our epistle reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the spirit and of power so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet among the mature we do speak wisdom, though it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to perish, but we speak God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. <coughs> Excuse me. None of the rulers of this age understood this, 
For if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what human being knows what is truly human, except the human spirit that is within. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I have a tickle. So also no one condemns what is truly God's except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. I'd like to invite the children to come forward at this time. Alrighty, folks. Good morning. Good to see you. So today we have a special thing that we do once a month in church. Do you guys know what it is? It's commun communion. Yes, very good. All right, so what do you guys notice? What do you see up here? What are things? You can come on up. You see bread. Yeah, so we have bread, which we, we say is the body of Christ. It's, it, it is the body of Christ. And we have, what else do, do you guys? Grape juice, what do you, which is the blood of Jesus. Yes, yes. Um, well, here's, here's more, because we, we don't want everyone to go from the same cup uh, after the last couple of years. So we have little tiny cups for folks so everyone can have their own cup. Yep, it's more trays stacked. Isn't that kind of cool how they made that? Yeah. So we can call communion three different th things, okay? We call it communion, which reminds us that we're in a community with Jesus and all the Christians around the world and even those who came before us. So people who have been Christian for a long time. Sometimes we call it the Lord's Supper when we remember how Jesus ate with his disciples and told us to do this every once in a while so that we remember Jesus. And sometimes we call it Eucharist when we want to be reminded of the gift that Jesus gave us when he lived his life and, and, and died for us. But what's important, when we come back for communion after Children's Church, is when you eat this bread and drink this juice to try and taste God's love for us, okay? Whenever we celebrate communion, Jesus is really close to us, okay? All right, can we pray? This is a repeat after me prayer. This is a repeat after me prayer. Dear God, thank you for your gifts. Help us to be your gift to others. Amen. And I believe that you can follow Miss Alice if you want to go to Children's Church, okay? You can go back to your seat.
as a community of faith, we will always be in prayer with and for one another. We share each other's burdens. We celebrate one another's joys. We hold each other in prayer. Trust that those things that you've spoken out loud or hold in the silence of your hearts, that God brings those into God's self, that when you lack the words, the Spirit groans on your behalf. Let us begin our season of prayer with a time of silent prayer. God of joy. We believe those who follow your way will find blessing. Not in wealth, nor in health, nor in prestige, but by being nestled always within your embrace. You have created us to live in relationship with you and in love of our neighbors. You have made us to be salt, bringing savor to the bland, to be light for those who sit in darkness. Yet so often we lose our saltiness and cover our light. Forgive us, dear God. Once again, pour your mercy out upon us. Once again, we hear that refrain. Our sins are forgiven, and we are being made new. Your goodness is without end. And by your goodness, we might share grace and peace with others. Today, we pray for all those we hold in our hearts and minds. We pray for those who don't know where their next meal will come from. We pray for those facing a difficult diagnosis. We pray for those reaching out in the night of loneliness and isolation. Help us, dear God, not just to pray with our lips and hearts, but with our hands and feet. Make us more in your image. And may we be so graced that we would be the answer to another's prayers. We ask this in all things, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, Dom is official. He made it. We never doubted it, but uh, his, his time of concern is over. I would like to uh, remind you that our concert, the first of inaugural uh, Worthington Chamber Orchestra concert is this afternoon at five. Um, also know that we, as having communion today, we're gonna serve the choir first on this side. So we got you all taken care of. And then if you are gluten free, uh, there are gluten-free wafers at the stations and also to-go cups, if that would be more comfortable for you. So please uh, choose whatever that you would like. 
And if you would like to have communion served in your spot, just indicate so to our uh, ushers and we'll be happy to do that. Remember that we have, uh, if you have any interest in becoming a part of our new member class, Dom is receiving those names of interest. And if you're participating in the Lenten study, those books are now in the uh, office and you can pick them up. We have the second of our two focus groups on the uh, mission, vision, and core values that are being cultivated by our leadership board. Um, this is a, to have this focus group is to invest in transparency. We want it to reflect you. We want you to know what's going on and how we're going about this strategy. So um, please, if you are interested, please come and join us then. And last but not least, a big thanks to Miss Rachel this morning. What a lovely gift you brought to us this morning, and, and we really appreciate that. And did I say that right? Phoebe, you are not a Rachel. Where are you? There you are. There you are. Thank you. It was fabulous and great to have you. Thank you. Let's begin, uh, continue our worship by serving with our offering.
Would you join me now in our offertory prayer? Lord, our rock and redeemer, you've said that whatever we give is acceptable if we give it eagerly. Help us to bring our offerings with an eager heart as an act of worship to you. May we find the comfort we desire in you and the strength we need in your name. May your presence be with us every hour of the day. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Would you remain standing for our uh, gospel reading? Our gospel lesson is from Matthew chapter 5. Verses 13 through 20. You are the salt of the earth, for if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The word of God for the people of God. <coughs> Please be seated. Let's pray. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Our strength, our rock, our love, and our redeemer. Amen. I've uh, always been an introverted person. Um, this wasn't a problem growing up in a small town because by the time I was in third grade, I had already made all the friends that I would need all the way through high school. But when I got to college, I quickly realized that if I was going to make friends, I would have to actually leave my dorm and go do things, despite this being entirely at odds with my personality. Now, I figured the safest bet to meet people who I had things in common with would be to go to the campus Bible study, which was held at the home of uh, Chaplain John Powers, who was the chaplain at Ohio Wesleyan at that time. So one August evening, my freshman year, as the sun was setting, I headed out with sweaty palms and a head full of riveting small talk questions like, what's your major? 
and, <laughs> and where are you from? I was a very good conversationalist. Now, when I got to the house, I took a deep breath and I knocked on the door and mere seconds later, the door swung inward and there stood a man with a long white beard and glasses on his nose. And if you think that sounds an awful lot like Santa, you're not far off from the truth. And before I knew what was happening, I was wrapped in chaplain's embrace, my arms kind of pinned to my side, kind of rigid in my body. And while still hugging me, he said, I'm so glad you're here. And a minute later, and when I say a minute later, this is a minute of hugging. That is a long <laughs> hug. A minute later, he, he holds me at arm's length, looks up into my eyes and says, who are you? This isn't just a story of an introvert meeting an extrovert, but I've come to realize that this isn't a bad example of how Christian hospitality should work. You know, we start with embracing by expressing our joy as someone's presence here with us before figuring out the, uh, the identity or who someone is a little bit later. In fact, these opening passages to Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, which Lou began to unpack for us last week, follow this pattern pretty closely. First, Jesus embraces those who came to hear his teaching. He tells them who are gathered that they are blessed. Uh, one person in our Bible study, which meets right before this service at 9 o'clock each week, and we go over the preaching text, one person in that class said that to be blessed is to be touched by God or embraced by God. I like this definition. You poor in spirit, you who mourn, you meek, you who hunger and thirst for righteousness, you merciful, you pure in heart, you peacemakers, you who are persecuted, you are held in God's embrace. Today, Jesus pivots to the second part of that pattern, to dealing with matters of identity. In effect, he's asking those who gather around him, do you know who you are? Do you know who you are. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light that pierces darkness. You are the city shining on the hill. Let me be specific. Jesus is telling his hearers who they are in gathered to community, who they are when they are together. You might be tired of hearing me say this, and trust me, I'm tired of the limits of the English language in this regard, but Jesus isn't talking about the singular you, but the plural you. And once again, I think it's best we lean into that eminently useful term, y'all. <laughs> y'all are the salt of the earth. Y'all are the light of the world. Y'all are a city on a hill that can't be hid. Not one of you has the saltiness that God requ requires. Not one of you is luminous enough on your own, but together you make the whole thing salty and bright. So Jesus is telling those who gather that they are salt and light. What does this mean? It deserves a little unpacking. And I found that salt served three common and evident applications in ancient Israel. At least three. These are the ones that are, are most evident. First, salt added flavor. As Job says in Job chapter 6, verse 6, can tasteless food be eaten without salt? Which, if you've read the book of Job, the fact that Job found the time to complain about bland food amid everything else that was going on uh, indicates something <laughs> important. Second, salt was used as a preservative in a hot climate without refrigeration. It's how you made sure that folks didn't get sick from eating food that perished. And finally, we have accounts in both Leviticus and Deuteronomy that salt was used in the rituals in the temple that reaffirmed the covenant between God and God. 
and Israel. Salt was so important in the ancient world that Roman soldiers would be given a salt stipend on top of their regular pay. This was known as a saldare, or salary, which you might receive these days as well. And now, light, outside the evident and practical meaning of light in a world without electricity, was used as a metaphor for how God's people, the Israelites, were to be a blessing to the whole world as, God, as God's love poured out upon all people. In Isaiah chapter 49, verse 6, the prophet offers these words on behalf of God. I will give you as a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. But what does this mean for us now? And in my reading, I uh, came across a couple characteristics that salt and light share in common, and what Jesus might be saying about the nature of those who followed him. First, salt and light are precious. Life at the time of Matthew's gospel would not be possible without both salt and light. Second, salt and light change that which surrounds them. Salt either enhances or covers over another flavor, and light is both seen as well as it illuminates the context in which it's in. And finally, salt and light don't do anything by their own effort or will, they can't, but are instead given their characteristics as people of faith by God. That salt is salty not in its own accord, or light isn't luminous on its own accord, but because these things are a gift. That's a lot of legwork, and I understand if you zoned out. Now's the time to come back. This is, this is the meat of the sermon, <laughs> and we'll talk for just a little bit about this. Who are you? You are precious. You are of immeasurable worth. You are made in the image of God. Despite what you might tell yourself in the dark of night, despite what you might have heard from other voices, you are precious. You have been given new life by your baptism and you have brought into the endless and beautiful dance of the Trinity. You are a part of a precious People, you are beautiful and beloved and made in the image of God. If you hear nothing else this day, hear that. Who are you? You are agents of change. You transform every room you walk into and the whole of society in which you find yourself. You together are a foretaste of the kingdom of of God. You are the spice of life. As I was preparing my research for this sermon, on Monday I received, well, a whole bunch of folks in the conference received a letter from Bishop Palmer entitled, Our Lives Are Misshaped by, by Violence. Our Lives Are Misshaped by Violence. I was struck by this passage where the bishop writes, At the time of this writing, there have been 39 mass shootings. We are just finishing the first month of 2023. Lunar New Year celebrations have been met with gun violence and a continuing onslaught of hateful rhetoric directed at Asian Americans. The egregious assault on and subsequent death of Tyree Nichols in Memphis at the hands of five police officers came to light. The now released video footage continues to assault all our sensibilities and values. As we speak, the list is being added to all the ways we humans confirm our addiction to violence and our refusal to submit to personal and social treatment for the same. How long, O Lord? That ends the bishop's quote. The world is dark. We aren't above it. We are not the salt of heaven and the light 
of eternity. We are the salt of the earth and the light of the world, the means by which God breaks into this world and shows what heaven might look like. We aren't separate, but enmeshed. We cannot be untouched by darkness. There is a call to shine a light on the epidemic of gun violence, on systemic and state-sanctioned violence against black people that strikes with the regularity of a metronome, and the efforts to shape this violence into a matter of course. The most diabolical evil is the violence that is made bland and unnoticeable. And as the salt of the earth, we have a responsibility to pour salt upon it until we spew the sin from our mouth as a culture. To shine the light of God's love upon a sin that until it burns away. You are agents of change. You illuminate the darkness and shine a new path that is possible. By the grace of God, you are salt and light. You change everything. Who are you? You are salt and light. Not because you made yourself this way, but because you've been given a gift. You have been made new by God. This part of Jesus' sermon isn't a command. It's a declaration. You are precious. You are world-changing. You have been graced by God. Now, before we end, we have to highlight the warning that Jesus gives, that our saltiness can be diluted and our light obscured. We can turn from our faith in God to faith in things of this world, to faith in money or in power, or in things that make us feel safe. We can slowly lose our saltiness or perhaps cover up our light because we don't want to see the things that the light illumines. The truth is that it is difficult to be who God has made us in this world. It's hard to keep our sharpness and our luminescence. So we come back to the y'all. This is why I think Jesus uses the plural here, because we can't be salt and light alone. On our own, we lose sight of our preciousness. We aren't reminded of the story of what God has done in history and what God is doing in us still. So we accept things that are unacceptable and lose the higher path that God calls us to. On our own, we try to change the world, but instead find ourselves changed. On our own, we forget that grace has filled us and we become graceless and cruel and selfish. So we gather together to marinate in the story that God has called us into, to light again the wicks of our hearts that we might shine in the world as we enter it, to find spiritual and physical nourishment that comes from gathering around God's image, to be reminded of who we are. Who are you? You are precious. You are agents of change. You are the result of God's grace. All we got to do is act like it. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please understand that in the United Methodist Church, all are welcome in any way and regardless of denomination or understanding, the table of the United Methodist Church is open to all. All right, here we go. In the wrong place. 
Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to to God. God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thy thanks and praise. It is right. And a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he was given himself up, for he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, We offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ Christ has has died. died. Christ Christ is risen. risen. Christ Christ will will come come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, we join together in the prayer that Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Would those who are helping us serve today uh, please come forward at this time. Of this may 
say Your darker sins Won't be forgiven You will always Have a place The table of grace The cup's never empty The plate's always
Hope for today and for tomorrow Light for all who want to see I am the bread of life I am bread for the hope I am the hope in I hope for the hope I am the door wide open so Come to me and I am know the that the shepherds of mine the truth and life with my arms away I am who I am and I am for you come and follow me I am who I am and I am for you come and follow me are precious. You are world changing. You are recipients of God's grace. Let us bless one another with the benediction found in your bulletin. May the peace of the Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. In the name of the Creator and the Christ and the Holy Spirit, go in peace. Amen. Amen.